we've got three people signed up to speak on um, agenda items. So we'll go ahead and get started and we'll call your name. And if you would please listen for the beeper and the beeper is for three minutes and hopefully you will be able to keep your remarks within three minutes to be respectful of everyone's time um, because I don't like to tell you to stop. So uh, listen for the beeper and we'll get started. Um, the first speaker is Melvin Clayton and speaking on agenda item number one, Mr. Clayton. Hello, Thank Council. You. It's dark. We, uh, we had requested that um, this be pulled from the agenda until the city council meeting for next month, the first Monday, and then we, we wanted, wanted to have the final reading then. So, okay. 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 Thank you, sir. I think uh, some of the lights need to be turned on. Not all of our lights are on on this, on this side here. Yes, thank you. All right, um, next speaker, Reverend Jesse Turner, agenda item number four. Uh, to the mayor and to the council members and to all who are gathered here this evening, our proposal number four on the agenda should not be amended tonight, but should be pulled. The proposal puts in jeopardy all future tax increases. The Dollarway Schools needs a millage increase to fix infrastructures and other, in order to create a better learning environment that's conducive to the students' learning. We should invest in our youth and school facilities, not playground equipment. Item number four is a piece of legislation that has not been thoroughly vetted. Further, Voting for a tax increase on playground equipment when the facilities in Dollarway, the Dollarway District, is in dire need of additional funding. The community needs sidewalks in Dollarway, Watson Chapel, and the inner city. We need better street lighting, wider streets. Downtown is a mess. In addition, we need monies to do these things. Passing a tax now would put a future tax in jeopardy for major infrastructures. We believe that these taxes that's being brought forth now is a way to have a jumping off point to run for mayor. We will contact our legislators to stop the political double dipping because we believe that when someone is in office, if they want that office, they ought to stay in that office rather than running for another office and then have something to hang over the heads of the voter to say that if you don't vote for me, I'll still be on the council or I'll still be in the seat that I'm, I serve and I will retaliate. These things can happen. So our legislators, state, need to adopt a law that says that there will be no political double dipping. And our community cannot shoulder the load of another tax increase. So I encourage the council tonight, if they would uh, pull this, pull this, I'll encourage Ms. Walker to pull this from that and not straddle this community with more taxes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Bill Ray. Agenda item number four. Good evening, council members. Good evening. Forgive me, but I've got my tobacco on. I've been in a meeting all day long at the state house. And it's cold. It was cold up there. I didn't have a hat. I come to say no. Urge you to vote no. On resolution number four, leveling tax. I know a movement in the state right now is hasn't come about yet. The signatures are beginning to grow, 
And with all the uh, taxes that have been raised in the last four or five years on the hotels, and uh, the, also the uh, utility companies, it's going to come, if, if they get enough, uh, number, enough signatures on there, it's going to come up in the general election. So be careful what you wish for. As I looked at this right here, I understand there's 19 parks we have. Second page, what do you want to add to it? When I looked at this and saw this, well, these are the needs, and these are something else we want to consider. You consider nine individual things here, from yes, maybe, not really, no, then would you be interested in this here also, three others? So that's, you know, we'll just say nine. <coughs> Keep increasing, the money's got to go higher. And what are you going to do with the money? Where are you going to get the money? You know, where are we going to get the money? You know, I don't like paying any more than I have to. And I don't think you do either. So, in all fairness, uh, I ask you to vote no on this issue. And I want to say one more thing to uh, Alderman Boyd. We're going to miss you. And I want to see you there at our next uh, meeting, if you don't mind. We will miss you. God bless you all. Vote right. God bless. Thank you. Uh, Robert Wall, agenda number one. Agenda item number one. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I think it was addressed earlier, but we, we did uh, have met with Mr. Clayton and we're in support of the item being pulled to the uh, December agenda. Yes, sir. It has been pulled. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our speakers for agenda items. So the Pine Bluff City Council meeting for November the 2nd, 2015 is hereby called to order. May we have roll call, please? I'll call the Here. I think so. Yeah. Another speaker. I can't believe it. Yes. Okay. I don't have her on the list. I have her on the non-agenda items. Yes, ma'am. Uh, afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. What were they speaking to? Sorry. What item was she going to speak to? She was. Uh, Non-agenda. Non-agenda item. Non item. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. Is it going to be called for a vote because that's why we're all here? So you number wanted number three? Yes, okay. I'm sorry. Our mistake. Come on up, please. I don't, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Madam Mayor, City Council, good evening. Evening. I represent the Watson Boulevard and Collegiate Circle neighborhoods regarding number three on the proposed ordinances and resolutions. And uh, first, um, we went to the meeting that was held by the Planning Commission after we received notices in the mail on June the 15th, and this was regarding a public hearing. And we packed that public hearing because we were against a change in zoning on the University uh, Drive Overlay <clears throat> District. So rather than bring it for a vote, they decided to form a committee, and I was one of the individuals put on that committee, and we had three meetings. And in those meetings, um, they did advise us of various things, but they did not advise us that they were calling it for a vote. And the night that we were before the Planning Commission, uh, one of our residents asked in particular, when would this likely come up for a vote? And we were told it wouldn't be before December. We realized it was in the newspaper, but since we had people on the committee, we just feel like it's, it's in bad faith, that the city operated in bad faith in passing that on through without even notifying us, and we were on the committee that it was coming up for a vote. So now it's in the city council's hands. And all of those residents from Watson Boulevard and Collegiate Circle, if you would raise your hands, please, as a show of your attendance tonight. Um, the other issue that we had rather quickly is the legality of the ordinance, the ordinance to begin with 
being proposed by the city of Pine Bluff because in section 2938, it states that changes uh, may be initiated by the city council or by the planning commission, but it doesn't say by the city of Pine Bluff in those particular terms. So this was sent to us and it says that the application is in the name of the city of Pine Bluff. The third issue that we had is that we don't want to lose the character of our neighborhood, so we are still against any rezoning that would cost, that was cause a loss of the neighborhood's character. And our suggestions, which was to perhaps have a buffer zone between the houses and the proposed new zoning, which is primarily commercial, was not even entertained. Um, so they didn't even consider it. They didn't consider that, and they didn't consider any of the other suggestions that were made. So as representatives, you're our representatives. You represent the people. So what we want to ask is that you vote for what your constituents want and what the majority wants, and that you not vote in your own interests um, as our older persons. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving forward, may we have roll call, please? Alderman Bryant? Here. Alderman Stepp? Here. Alderman Walker? Present. Alderman Boyd? Here. Alderman Brown, Sr.? Here. Alderman Mays? Here. Alderman Hogan? Here. Alderman Brown, Jr.? Here. Thank you. Each of you have a copy of the minutes from. So move. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and second that the minutes as presented be approved. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Matt, Matt, before we get started, are we sure we finished with everybody that signed to speak? Yes, sir. I just want to make sure that the people that were here didn't get that. For some reason, they didn't get a chance to speak. It's your right to speak if you signed up. But we could have got something confused. Just want to make sure. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. She signed up for later, yeah. Okay. Did we approve the minutes? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Moving on to committee reports. Ways and Means, Alderman Brummett. Yes, Mayor. The Ways and Means Committee met prior to the meeting. We have a budget adjustment that was in everybody's packet for the, from the police department to provide sufficient funding for accounts through the end of the year. The total amount is $20,000, and it's coming from within the department. They're just transferring money to meet specific needs in specific areas. I move we accept this budget adjustment from the police department. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a budget adjustment for the police department in the amount of $20,000 be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Mayor, we also reviewed item number four, the ordinance about the 1% gross receipt tax for use by city parks and recreation uh, to be a, uh, on the uh, hotels in the city. And uh, the committee recommended that it go to the full council. Uh, the vote was two to one. And uh, recommend that it go to the full council for consideration. Um, we also would like to bring to everybody's attention that the, you have your budget books for 2016. And Mr. Miller will be calling all the chairmen to set up the committee meetings to review the areas under your purview. Uh, he should be calling you in the next week to get those all set up so that we can move on forward with the budget process. I want to thank the mayor and the department heads for this is actually like a week earlier than we usually get it. So thank you all. That concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Ordinances and resolutions. Alderman Brummett. Mayor of the Ordinance Resolutions Committee met. I, the sponsor is pulling item number one. Um, number two will be read for the third time. Three, four, and five will be read for the second time. And then six through ten are resolutions and they will be completed. And that concludes the report. Thank you. Economic and Community Development, Alderman Brown, Sr. Thank you, Mayor. I have no report at this time. No report. Okay, thank you, sir. Public Health and Welfare, Alderman Brown, Jr. Uh, no report, Mayor. Thank you. Public Works, Alderman Mays. 
Development and Planning, Alderman Boyd. Uh, no report, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Traffic and Aviation, Alderman Holcomb. Uh, no report, Mayor. Administration, Alderman Steps. No report, Mayor. Thank you. Public Safety, Alderman Walker. Uh, no report, Mayor, but I do want to say on number three, uh, it was discussed at the last council meeting uh, that Ms. Uh, Lori Walker would get with uh, someone from the university and uh, and someone from the community uh, about this ordinance because you know, no one was really knowledgeable of what was going on with it. And I don't know if she have done so, but uh, if she have not, I suggest that we do not read it the second reading until she have done, you know, that she have contacted these people. Um, okay. Why don't we wait until we get to that point and see? Thank you. Okay. Moving on to ordinances and resolutions. Mayor, we have an ordinance requiring all contractors involved in construction projects administered by the City of Pine Bluff be licensed, bonded, insured, and for related purposes up for the third and final reading. An ordinance requiring all contractors involved in construction projects administered by the City of Pine Bluff be licensed, bonded, insured, and for related purposes. Move for adoption. Second. 
second. It's been properly moved and second that an ordinance requiring all contractors involved in construction projects administered by the city of Pine Bluff be licensed, bonded, insured, and for related purposes. Floor is now open for discussion. Uh, Mayor, uh, if any of the council members have a question about it, I really would ask that they are stated now because the purpose of this is for the protection of the people that is getting their houses done because right now we have people that is complaining. Uh, they've had their houses done and they can't stay in them. And, to, uh, and it's going to, uh, I assume, fall on the city. So if you are a legitimate contractor and intend to do the right thing, I don't see where it should be a problem of being licensed and bonded. Because I don't think anyone would want someone working on their uh, house and, and couldn't stand by their work. So I ask, that it be, ask for everyone's support. Can I speak? Sure. Yes, sir. Man, he's nice Pull it to you. It's a cord. It's not coming up all the way. Okay. Talk out of one of the other ones. Well, I'm fully in support of this. I've toured some of the houses that uh, our community development department has, has worked on. And it's ridiculous when you go to some of these places and see the work that some of these contractors are doing. You, the people give them a scope of what the problem is, and six months later, the, the scope of the work is, is falling down. And, and that's not fair to these citizens who look forward to getting their houses rehabbed and, and remodeled. And somebody needs to know about this stuff. You know, they keep everything up here hush-hush, but that's, that's what it is. And if you, I can take you some of them, and, and it's just pitiful. The people can't go forward. They got to go backwards because they stuff falling off the walls, uh, electrical, the, the, the ceiling fans are falling down, and they had spending fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on this stuff. And you know, come on now, and that's that's not right. People in their houses, uh, and it's just sad. And I'm supporting this, uh, Alderman Walker. Any other comments? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, we have a most an ordinance amending Chapter 29 of the City of Pine Bluff Code of Ordinances and providing for the creation of the B6 University Drive Zoning District in the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, up for the second reading. An ordinance amending Chapter 29 of the City of Pine Bluff Code of Ordinances and providing for the creation of the B6 University Drive Zoning District in the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. We'll place it on the calendar for the final reading at the next council meeting and request that the request of Ms. Walker be uh, taken care of by then, please. Okay, we'll move on to number four. We have an ordinance levying a 1% gross receipts tax for use by the City Parks and Recreation Department for the promotion and development of the City Parks and Recreation Areas and Related Purposes. Up for the second reading. An ordinance levying, levying a 1% gross receipts tax for use by the city's parks and recreation department for the promotion and development of city parks and recreation areas and related purposes. We'll place it on the calendar. We have an ordinance directing the finance director to provide information regarding the bills of the city to the city council and related purposes. An ordinance levying a 1% gross um, I'm sorry. An ordinance directing the finance director to provide information regarding the bills of the city to the city council and for related purposes. We'll place this on the calendar to be up for its final reading at the next council meeting. We have a resolution appointing Dr. Michelle Paskovich to the Aviation Commission. Whereas the term of Joy Blankenship as a member of the Aviation Commission has expired, and whereas the mayor has elected to appoint Dr. Michelle Paskovich to the position subject to council approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, that the mayor's appointment of Dr. Michelle Paskovich to the Aviation Commission to serve a term to expire September 30, 2020, is hereby approved and confirmed. 
Move for adoption. Second. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a resolution appointing Dr. Michelle Pakovich to the a a to the Aviation Commission be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, we have a resolution appointing Jill Haley to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas. Whereas the term of David Fleming as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas has expired, and whereas the mayor has elected to, elected to appoint Jill Healy to succeed Mr. Fleming, subject to council approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, that the mayor's appointment of Jill Healy to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas to serve a term to expire August 31st, 2018, is hereby approved and confirmed. Move for adoption. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a resolution appointing Jill Healy to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, we have a resolution appointing Dr. Jerry Ingram to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Ar Arkansas. Whereas the term of Linnell Roberts as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas has expired, and whereas the mayor has elected to uh, J Dr. Jerry Ingram to succeed Ms. Roberts subject to council approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, that the mayor's appointment of Dr. Jerry G. Ingram to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas to serve a term to expire August 31st, 2018 is hereby approved and confirmed. Move for adoption. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a resolution appointing Dr. Jerry Ingram to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, we have a resolution appointing Alexandra Cosmitis to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas. Whereas the term of Lam Cockrum as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas has expired, and whereas the mayor has elected uh, Andre Andrea Cosmitis to succeed Ms. Cockrum, subject to council approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, that the mayor's appointment of Andrea Cosmitis to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for, the South for Southeast Arkansas to serve a term to expire August 31st, 2018 is hereby approved and confirmed. Move for adoption. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a resolution appointing Alexandra Cosmatis to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, we have a resolution appointing Barbara J. Warren to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas. Whereas the term of William Demeters as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Arkansas some Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas has expired, and whereas the mayor has elected uh, Barbara J. Warren to succeed Mr. Demeters, subject to council approval. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, that the mayor's appointment of Barbara J. Wall Warren to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas to serve a term to expire August 31st, 2018 is hereby approved and confirmed. Move for adoption. Second. It's been properly moved and second that a resolution appointing Barbara J. Warren to the Board of Trustees of the Arts and Science Center for Southeast Arkansas be approved. Floor is now open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, that concludes our agenda. Okay. I'm not sure what to say next. <laughs> Just teasing. Yes, ma'am. Um, and, and I uh, would like to address uh, Reverend Jesse Turner. Uh, and normally I would not do this, but every council meeting, uh, he has something to say. Uh, and it, the problem is 
Mr. Turner has ran for every board, I think, that is in this city. He has moved about, and he can't get elected, and so he picks at me. So what you need to do, Mr. Turner, is join on the bandwagon and help somebody instead of helping yourself. Okay, let's let's do this, Miss Walker. That no, could be a no, no, no. that could be a discussion afterwards because it's not an agenda item. So let's call for a motion to dismiss, and then you can discuss it with him, please. So we need a motion to we need a motion. Second. Thank you. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion. Council meeting is adjourned.